Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to define the quantity and unit value of a property using Python API. To get started, let's go to the Modeling tab. If you do not have access to the Modeling tab, you can create an add-on to complete this tutorial. I'll now create a new component, add a box or block feature. I'll now click the Behaviors drop-down menu here and then click Python script to add that behavior and open its editor. We are going to create a property in the component of this script. We don't need these lines of code here, so I will delete them. Let's now get the component object of our script, so I'll write comp equals get component. Before we create the property, let's see if it already exists in the component. I'll write prop equals comp dot get property. This allows you to find a property by name. So let's search for a property called test temperature. And if the property does not exist, we have to create it. All right, if not prop, prop equals comp dot create property. This allows you to create a property of a given type and name. So let's create a property that can contain a real number. Its type will be VC real and its name will be test temperature. We will use the default constraint for the property so we can assign a real number. I'll write prop.value equals 38.0. I'll compile the script, go to the component graph panel, and select the properties checkbox here. So underneath the root node, expand properties, and yes, there is our test temperature property with the assigned value of 38. Go ahead and select the property now go to the property task pane and you can see it does not have an assigned quantity or magnitude so there's really no way to tell what does 38 mean. To fix this, let's go to our script and we'll use the application object to find or create a quantity and then assign that to our property. So I'll write app equals get application quant for quantity equals app Dot find quantity. This allows you to find a quantity by name in the application. We want to find a quantity called temperature. And if this quantity does not exist, we can create it if we want to. So I'll write if not quant, quant equals app dot create quantity. This allows you to create a quantity of a given name and type. So we know we want the name to be temperature. And for quantity types, they can either be scalar or vector. Temperature does not have a direction, so it's scalar. The constant here is going to be VC underscore quantity scalar. Let's now assign this quantity to our property. So prop dot quantity equals quant. But are we done? We know that we assigned a quantity of temperature, but what is the unit of measurement here for 38.0 when we assign it to the value? Remember, you can measure temperature in Fahrenheit, Celsius, or Kelvin. I might use one system of measurements on my product, but let's say I share this component with somebody else and they're using maybe uh, not the metric system, they're using Fahrenheit. So to work around this, whenever you're using API and scripts, you're using the canonical units of the system. So we use SI units for the International System of Units and the SI or canonical unit for temperature is Kelvin or K. So 38.0 that's actually meaning 38 Kelvin is the value assigned to the property. So if I was to compile the code you can see in the component graph panel it's not 38 anymore that value was converted from Kelvin to Celsius and that's why I get this value here. Now, if you're not using the metric system in your 4.0 product, you can click the File tab to go backstage, click Options, and under General Options, you can change the Units option here to Metric. But if you want to continue using uh, one of these other options, just know that I'm using Celsius, not Fahrenheit. Let's go back. And now, how can we pass a Celsius value to the property in our API? Well, we have to get the unit first and then convert our value to the canonical value or the Kelvin value. So let's use our quantity object to find a unit. So I'll write unit equals quant 
dot get effective unit. And this allows you to find a unit associated with this quantity that matches you know, the size that you want to measure. So if we say 38.0, what unit of temperature will it give us back? Let's find out. So I'll print unit.name. And if you are going to be converting units, it's good to know what the unit factor is, as well as the unit offset. Let's print this out. So I'll compile the code. And if I go to my output panel, we can see that the unit that I'm using right now for temperature is Celsius. Its unit factor is 1, and the offset is 273.15. To double check our work, let's see in our script what is 38.0 minus the unit offset. What do you expect? Let's see. Compile the code, and 38.0 minus the offset gives us negative 235.15, and that is the value that was assigned to the property here. But now we want to convert our value 38.0 to a Kelvin value. So let's comment out this print command here. And it's very easy. You could write a formula like this, but you can just use the unit object. So prop.value equals unit dot, and we have this lovely method called convert to canical. So this will convert the value you give to the canical unit for this property's quantity. So if we put you know, 38.0, assuming we mean Celsius, it will convert the Celsius value to a Kelvin value. If I compile the code, go to my component graph panel, yes, that's what we get. So now 38.000 Celsius is the value of our property. And to check our work, let's actually print out what value it converted here. So we'll print unit dot convert to canical 38.0 because it didn't actually pass 38.0 Celsius, it passed the Kelvin value. So that's what we're doing here. We're going to print out what value was actually given to the property. Compile our code, and we can see it was 3115. I'm sorry, 311.15. Now this is good when you want to set the value of the property, but what if you need to use it in other code? So in our script, instead of printing that value, let's see what happens when we print the property's value in our script. So prop.value, we're printing it. Compile the code, and you can see it gives us the Kelvin value, not the Celsius value. So be very aware of that whenever you're using this property value in your code. To quickly review, let's go to our help tab, and we're first going to open the help file, and then you want to access the reference guide expand expressions, and select this topic here called unit specification. So here you can see a built-in units table. So we were working with degrees Celsius. You can see its quantity is temperature, but it is not a canical unit. The same goes for Fahrenheit. It's with temperature, but it's not canical. And if we go down to Kelvin, it is the canical unit we use for our API. Let's exit out of the help file, and now go to our Python API reference. Go to VC Application, Methods, and you want to go to a section called Unit. Here we are. And here you can find a method for creating a quantity as well as finding a quantity. And if you create a quantity, its base type is VC Scalar Quantity, but you can also create vector type quantities as well. Now the unit family will be your units option you set backstage, so your system of measurements. In this case, my unit family was metrics. And then the unit group, temperature, there are many different ways to measure temperature, so it's kind of its own group, and the units in that temperature group are Fahrenheit, Celsius, Kelvin, you know, and so on. So from the unit group, you actually do have a method here called get unit with magnitude, but this is kind of doing the same thing as the one you have available in VC scalar quantity called get effective unit. And that's what we use to find the unit object best suited for our magnitude or measuring our quantity. So you have the conversion formula there, but you can use these methods for converting to a canical unit when you want to assign the value to the property, or you can also can convert a canical unit to a unit value you want. Let's exit out of this. And this completes the video. 
If you have any questions, please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com, and I hope you have a wonderful day.